Marvel Comics, a fixture of the childhood as well as the adulthood of many. Whether it be the comics, movies, cartoons, or various other mediums you can look through, I think it's fair to say that almost everyone watching this video is in some way familiar with it. And if not, well, no clue why you clicked on this video. It's about a niche Marvel character you've probably never heard of. But I hope you enjoy it irregardless. Lots of people picked up hobbies or found weird new rabbit holes while quarantined. I started my fascination with this kind of shit, the weird footnotes of Marvel history, in March 2021. Which is way too late to be starting a pandemic rabbit hole, but I did it anyway. And I wanted to share with you some of what I found. Some of the characters I talk about in this series you've never heard of. Some of them you have. I do not promise to shy away from the more obvious choices. I will probably cover Frogman eventually. I fucking love Frogman. But I wanted to start on a different note. A character who is fairly niche, but not so niche it's impossible you've heard of him. Someone whose comic footprint is fairly small, but has an interesting story to be told nonetheless. And just so you know in advance, I am sort of a comic novice. I grew up on Marvel, but I was a kid and didn't have a way to really read the comics. So I mostly engage through shows, video games, and YouTube videos. I've been reading comics for real recently. really like The Runaways. The Runaways is good. Read The Runaways. But just know that if I don't explain something correctly or I mess up in some way, I, I, I apologize for that. I'm trying my best, but I'm sure I fucked this up somewhere. I promise part two won't have this long of an intro, I just wanted to lay some groundwork. Anyway, let's talk about Sleepwalker. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on how important of an era the 90s was for Marvel. I wasn't even alive. But what I do know is that some super fucking iconic characters came out during this period. I'm talking Gambit, Deadpool, Cable, fucking Squirrel Girl, love Squirrel Girl. But, as there always is, there was also a less iconic side of this. Not to say the characters were bad, far from it in a lot of cases, but characters like Slapstick and Dark Hawk wouldn't go on to become Marvel A-listers. Another such character in this vein is Sleepwalker. This video is not about him. Maybe it should be. He's a really interesting premise for a character. Hailing from the Mindscape, Sleepwalker was tricked by his arch-nemesis cobweb into getting trapped in the mind of this teen, and now he's summoned whenever the kid is asleep, and... <laughs> I think my favorite part of typing this out and reading it out loud right now is how fucking absurd it sounds. Try talking... Try, just try talking about something Marvel related. Try it. You will eventually reach a point where you are saying something that sounds fucking absurd, but it's just kind of normal fare. It's how things go. But as I said, this video is not about Sleepwalker. It's instead about the first proper villain he fights. Enter scene, Jeff Hagiz. I have no idea how to pronounce his last name, so I'm going to say it Hagiz. Hagiz, that's funny to say. Hagiz held a job as a defense contractor, worked in missile propulsion systems. He was pretty damn good at it, actually, but it was a stressful job. So he decompressed with his favorite pastime, pool. And his second favorite pastime, gambling dangerous sums of money. As you might expect, Hagiz was in debt. Insane amounts of debt. To people you don't want to be in debt to. Like him. Look at that man. Look at him. Do you want to be in debt to him? Do you think you could pay back that debt? No! Well, at least he still has his job at- oh, 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 never mind. He lost that when his employers found out about the whole gambling gig. They were afraid he was selling info. Which he wasn't, and they had no actual proof he was. But fuck it, right? No job, insane debt. Pretty traditional villain story. You got a lot of money to pay, you have no way to pay it. So, Huggies did what anyone in this set of circumstances would do, and became a burglar. But this is Jeff goddamn Huggies. If Jeff goddamn Huggies is gonna rob a bank, he's gonna do it in style. And so, he became 8-Ball. He donned this costume, which strikes a perfect balance between honestly kinda cool and absolutely fucking ridiculous. 
and created a pool cue which was able to absorb any force applied to it and send it back 1000 fold, which is actually kind of terrifying. He doesn't really use it for anything that destructive, but like, he could. Hagiz is actually an extremely talented inventor, but seems to only have a single idea. That being that literally everything he invents has to be pool themed. He built a hover rack in the shape of a pool rack. A giant flying pool ball, which is my personal favorite. Exploding pool balls, pool balls that act as cameras, and of course, his suit, which is very stretchy and kind of bulletproof, only his helmet, which I guess is something. <laughs> no headshotting a geese. He recruited a gang, aptly titled the Eight Balls Gang, and went to rob a bank. Little did they know, Sleepwalker was flying nearby, freshly finished leaving a pickpocket on a very high swing, and a fight ensued. Eight Ball's gang just... kinda suck, but Eight Ball himself actually puts up a great fight. This is due in part to Sleepwalker being in a weakened state, as one of his weaknesses is being too far from the ground. Get it? Because he's a walker. <laughs> Sleepwalker quickly regains power, though, now that he's actually on the ground, and Geese gets the fuck out of there on his pool rack hovercraft. Sleepwalker tries to stop him, but the absolute jackass human he's stuck in, Rick Sheridan, wakes up, unveiling Sleepwalker's other weakness. Rick being awake. Sleepwalker vanishes and 8-Ball gets away free. 8-Ball doesn't appear for a while, aside from a small cameo in a Captain America comic, where we see him playing pool with Oddball at the bar with no name, a place he goes a lot because he is a pool-themed villain. He watches a bunch of female supervillains beat the shit out of each other, but he doesn't say a damn word in that comic. He does eventually come back to the Sleepwalker comics, though, breaking through the roof of a pool tournament while riding a giant fucking flying pool ball to steal a pool trophy, worth an obscene amount of money. Sleepwalker tries to stop 8-Ball, but gets genuinely fucking destroyed, with 8-Ball using his ultimate strategy. Launching people at Sleepwalker to distract him, decking the absolute shit out of him with a dumpster, and then strapping him to a flying 8-Ball firework bomb. This is real. While Sleepwalker does survive, 8-Ball just kind of takes the trophy and assumes the ball bombs got the job done. Some weird shit happens in Sleepwalker and Rick Sheridan swap bodies, which is important, but I don't want to talk about it because it doesn't involve 8-Ball. But know that Rick is now with Sleepwalker and is not good at it. That part is very important. 8-Ball goes back to the bar with no name and starts to brag about his victory over Sleepwalker, to which every other patron responds, who the fuck cares? Which, you know, fair. Well, almost everyone with the exception being Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin is a character with a fairly expansive comic history that I am not even remotely equipped to cover, but know that he's usually a Spider-Man foe and that he's kinda crazy. Hobgoblin proposes a bet with 8-Ball, with each putting $100,000 on the line. The goal? Killing Sleepwalker, who Hobgoblin says is alive. He's right. They both eventually track down Rick and Sleepwalker's body and proceed to kick the shit out of him. Rick tries to put up a fight, but, you know, he's just a guy who suddenly has cool powers or something. Hobgoblin deals a near-fatal blow and technically wins the bet. However, 8-Ball realizes that something's up with Sleepwalker and Hobgoblin, after checking for himself, concurs. Not wanting to accept a victory against a weak version of Sleepwalker, Hobgoblin is declared the technical winner, but they don't exchange the award. This didn't count. And this is the last time that 8-Ball appears in a Sleepwalker comic. So I stopped reading Sleepwalker and moved on to the next appearance of our goat. And don't you worry, our pool-loving gambling friend comes back. The wiki says his next appearance is in Deadline, which I don't think is true, actually. There is a character named 8-Ball who is acting as the guard for Dr. Pow's villain medical clinic, and is given a hat by the main character, reporter Kat Farrell. However, the guy doesn't look or act like 8-Ball at all. 
So this might just be a wrong mention on the wiki, and this is just some other guy who has the same name. Felt like mentioning it anyway, though, because if it is 8-Ball, I'd feel really stupid to forget it. He gets a genuine feature, though, in the 2004 She-Hulk comic, in which he's been. Drum roll, please. I'm too lazy to add a drum roll, so you do it. You, you add a drum roll. You do a drum roll right now. I'll, I'll give you a bit, you know? All right, thanks for the drum roll. Anyway, he's thrown in tiny jail! Known as the Big House, countless supervillains were shrunken down using Pym particles. If I said Pym wrong, bite me. And contained within these tiny little cells. And this includes our favorite, Eight Ball. A villain named Southpaw, who is a granddaughter of Holden Holloway, She-Hulk's boss, gets arrested. Negotiations begin to get her on a rehabilitation path under She-Hulk. Without asking She-Hulk, but we don't care about that. This is, however, utilized by the Mad Thinker, who has Southpaw act as a decoy while he and many of the other villains contained in the facility escape. And yes, this does include our fucking boy, 8-Ball, let's go! They enact an elaborate plan where they shrink down further, get out on She-Hulk's hand, which is extremely dangerous, but they do it anyway, and climb onto Southpaw as she is returned to normal size. There is an ensuing fight, and I regret to inform you all that 8-Ball is absolutely worthless in this fight, getting used as a projectile by She-Hulk and doing very little else. This is slander to him, but in fairness, he wasn't armed, so he wasn't at his full potential. He was ultimately sent back to prison after this, but he eventually managed to escape for real. He returns to his stealing ways, this time not to repay any debt, because I guess he already did that, but this time to pay his grandmother's medical bills. An actual fair reason to be robbing banks. He participates in a robbery with Whirlwind, Humbug, and Freezerburn, and together they rob another villain, billionaire Rikadana. During this heist, we learn that he has a gastrointestinal disorder, which makes him have to use the bathroom a lot. This is the only piece of trivia mentioned about him on the wiki, which I think is funny. This would turn out to be a fatal mistake, though, as all of the criminals were taped in the act and Rikadana put out a hit on them. Misty Knight and Colleen Wing make contact with 8-Ball via cutting him off from talking to his grandma and attempt to interrogate him. However, Wrecker of the Wrecking Crew fires a rocket launcher at the car, and Tegiz sadly doesn't make it out alive. And despite comics being infamous for having deaths mean basically nothing? This is genuinely the last time we ever hear from Magiz. Though, if it's any silver lining, this certainly isn't the last appearance of 8-Ball. There have actually been two since his passing, in fact. 8-Ball 2, or would that be 8-Ball the second? I don't fucking know. Was an entirely unrelated guy who was never given a name and appeared literally once. 8-Ball the third, on the other hand, is also an unnamed man, but he has a little more meat on the bone. He was sold the equipment of the original Huggies via our old pal, the Hobgoblin, and proceeded to work for said Hobgoblin. This version of 8-Ball is really odd in that he's actually made more comic appearances than Huggies himself. However, I will explain no more about him. We all know in our hearts that the only real 8-Ball is the man who broke through a ceiling riding a giant 8-Ball to steal a trophy. And that's the story. Did he deserve better? I'd say... kinda? He certainly wasn't a character built to be a mainstay. He was a primary villain of a niche character, and he served his purpose. No, but I think where he was truly robbed was that despite them continuing to use 8-Ball, they never brought him back in any form. As mentioned earlier, comics revive characters constantly. I think it might be time to hand the mantle back to the OG. I, I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry if it was boring. This was my first time scripting a video, and it was kind of a test run, honestly. I did a character who would take less research overall, so that if this video was not good and no one ever wanted more, then I wouldn't have to have spent a lot of time researching. And there was a lot of shit I probably should have researched more, so for part two, if you guys want part two, let me know in the comments. For part two, I'll definitely do a little more searching into the side things, so I'm a little more equipped to cover them. 
you have any feedback, leave it in the comments, and I hope you enjoy the story of 8-Ball.